he lives. <laughs> Thank you can handle Bill Noah. 
No problem. No problem. All right. So, for those of you who are new, we, we talk about a lot of deeply spiritual things here at this church. Final fours, the basketball, and all that. So, but we're glad you're here. We, we do like to have a good time here. I think the Lord doesn't mind if we laugh and uh, happy. Uh, I, I enjoy, uh, when I get here Sunday mornings, uh, I have an office upstairs, going out the back up the stairs, and I have a little office up here. And so I can hear what's going on down here. And that's good because it's, it's people are happy, and laughing, and it's a good sound. It's a good sound. Have you ever been in a church where you walk in and it's not like that? I mean, seriously, have, have you ever been in? <coughs> Morning, how you doing? I mean, man, I'm like, you know, we, we are. This is church. We're Christians, right, y'all? We're going to heaven. I mean, we got a lot to enjoy and laugh about and be thankful for. So, thank you for being here today. I have a couple of specific uh, advertisements, public service announcements, and I would like for Abby to come first. Wherever Abby is. Yeah, Abby, you got your mic there. Good. Hey, guys. Oh, there I am. How are y'all? Good. How are you? Great. So, as you know, we have a birthday coming up, and we're really excited about it. We're one, almost. Um, it's going to be April 17th, so what is that? Two weeks from today. We're going to have a big birthday party. We're going to have a big celebration. It's going to be fun. We want everybody to come out, bring your friends, bring your family. It's going to be good. Um, what we're going to do is after church, we're going to have a big old potluck dinner, lunch, out in the big barn. So what I'm going to ask is if you guys want to bring something, I'm going to send a, um, a sign-up sheet around next week. I'll have sections for like meats and sides and breads and desserts and whatever. Um, but if you want to bring something, I just ask that you come like 10, 15 minutes early and drop off your food. We'll arrange it and take care of all that during the service. So after the service, it'll be prepared for everybody to come out and just dig in after church. It's going to be really fun. Get me belly full. Um, but after that, we're going to have a lot of fun also. Stay as long as you want. We're going to be here. I mean, I'm probably going to be here all day. But bring your fold-up chairs. We're going to have music and games, not just for the kids, some fun for the adults too. But we're just going to make it one big party here on April 17th. So that's two weeks. Um, but be thinking this week, if you want to bring something for the potluck, uh, be thinking what you want to bring, and I will send around sign-up sheets next week. Awesome. Thank you, Abby. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Our one-year birthday, and we're going to celebrate. We've chosen the 17th of this month, two weeks from today, to celebrate Happy Birthday Community Church in Mount Pleasant. Now, this is the way this is kind of feeling to me. Again, maybe back to some of your uh, past experiences. Um, some churches have this this incredible, good old-fashioned homecoming Sunday. Are you familiar with that? And people bring food, and it's like you bring your best most wonderful, tasty, not healthy dish that you make and we bring, and that's kind of homecoming Sunday. And it's looking like this is probably what the 17th is going to be like. So we're, we believe in celebrating, and it's been an amazing one year. Uh, hard to believe that it, it's, it's gone so fast, and it's hard to believe that we're already one. We're going to celebrate that two weeks from today, so come early, bring your favorite, and uh, we're just going to have a party. Now, we, we have a amazing cake chef here in this church. And she's, where is she? Oh, she's working in the, the children's class. Did you see the cross cakes last week? Elizabeth made those. Well, I, it was funny. Uh, we were talking about our birthday party, and I said, well, we got to have a birthday cake on our birthday party. So I, I text Liz, her messenger, and I said, Liz, you know we're, we got a birthday party coming up and you've got to have a cake. And she said, I got it. I'm way ahead of it. I'm already thinking about it. So the cake lady is on it. We're going to have candles and kids come in. We'll sing happy birthday. Yay! And we're just... Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's my associate over here. Thank you. <laughs> So come that Sunday. If you're in a bad mood, don't come. Come or come and get pepped up. We're going to celebrate Happy Birthday Community Church in Mount Pleasant on the 17th. Now, there's another, the following weekend, we have another event coming up. And Rob 
is going to come and give you some details about I love my city. Really neat event that we're going to do. Still on? Okay, so I love my city. Uh, we've seen this come up before, but I just want to give you guys a couple of specifics about it this year. Uh, for the town of Mount Pleasant, it's actually going to be on the 23rd. Okay, we're going to start at Town Hall. But they gave us a list of some of the things that they're, they're, they desire to have done, they would like to have done. Uh, and I'm going to throw these out to you today, give you today to think about them. I'm also going to post tomorrow in the movement, uh, kind of reiterating what they are. And you guys can uh, show your interest in which ones you want to be involved in. Uh, and then we'll kind of make a collective decision on which ones we're going to uh, pull our resources towards. So we can have the, the biggest impact possible uh, from our church to the because that's, that's what we want to do. Uh, this is an extreme opportunity for us to get ourselves out there and show people in the community that we do care about where we live and we do care about them. Uh, so some of the ones that they've, they've offered up are painting fire hydrants blue and gold. I don't know why they went blue and gold, but whatever. <laughs> uh, new landscaping at the public library there in town. Uh, I think they want to kind of pull a lot of that out and, and kind of upfit and make it a little bit more modernized. Uh, Rosa, thanks for the troops. Basically what this is, we would actually make cards, uh, write notes, things like that, and then they would be shipped overseas to uh, men and women who are still stationed overseas. Uh, and then another one is cleaning up downtown, basically picking up trash, kind of beautification of, of downtown. So I, again, I'll post that tomorrow in the movement. Everybody kind of keep your eye out for that. Express which one you have interest in helping with. And then like I said, we'll kind of pull the resources that the greatest effect. A couple other ones that I wanted to mention. Uh, Wednesday nights, 7 p.m., Bible study. I, I finally got to make it this week. A lot of good information. Uh, if you want that further in-depth, as opposed to kind of a just above the board look at the Bible, come on, on Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. Uh, also, on the 30th, men's prayer breakfast. So if you have a clean bill of health from the doctor and you've got good cholesterol, come on the 30th, we can ruin it for you. Uh, it's also a really good time to fellowship and, and study and learn together. And then also, men's group on Tuesday nights, that's a discipleship group. We get together and we, we just do life together. So, you know, a lot of guys that are there are shaking their heads right now. They're like, yep, we should. But other than that, uh, that's all I have for you. Hey, Trump. Good. So, a couple things to, to keep in mind. Now, this I love my city thing. It's like, well, what is that? Oh, here, here's what that's about, okay? From the very beginning of this church, uh, our roots, our DNA, it is in our DNA to be a part of this community. You know, we're not, uh, I, I, sometimes you, you, uh, you hear folks talk about going to Africa or Peru or wherever around, and that's all great. Sometimes we forget to go across the street. That's right. And I think biblically, folks, we're to start right here where we are. The name of our church is a community church. And we're here. We are in Mount Pleasant. And I want the, the city officials, I want the, the, the town of Mount Pleasant to know that this church is not just here about us. You know what? And unfortunately, many churches have a reputation. It's kind of what can I get from my community? Well, I want them to know what can we give. How can we serve the community that we live in? And, and uh, so that's the plan, the 23rd, and you'll have these little projects that we can do to participate in our community. So thank you for that, Rob. Some, some neat things coming up, and uh, these will be not only good things to minister with, but fun things. Is David Cooper in here? Do we know yet when we're going to the children's home next? Can you, can you holler at us with that real quick? Give us a little detail on that. Another great local missions project that we do here. We go to the children's home every now and again and just help them out and play games and spend time with them. And our next visit is April 9th. And um, it's at 5 p.m. and it's not going to be dark, so this time we can actually go outside if we want to. Um, and if there's someone that wants to come and help or maybe speak, they can certainly do that. Um, we do like a little uh, Bible study with them for about 30 minutes and then we play games with them. But um, it's really good, and I hope to see you guys out. I just posted it on Facebook. Perfect. Thank you, Dave. Good. So a lot of neat stuff. Uh, we're not just a Sunday morning place. 
a lot of stuff going on and all those things. And, and, and uh, here's, here's the way that works. We, we have enough negativity all week long. What, I mean, <clears throat> most of us do. Your jobs and your bills and your problems and your challenges. Man, I believe church ought to be fun, folks. I believe church ought to be something that you get to do, not that you have to do. Oh, we have to go to this. Or we have... No, you don't. You really don't. You don't have to do anything except to meet the Lord at some point. But we get to do a lot of neat things to serve the Lord. So keep your bulletin. These, these things are in your bulletin. If you ever have any questions, you can check with us. And uh, that's, that's kind of what's coming up. Okay, now, here's what I want you to do. We're going to have a little music. I want you to stand. Some of you are new. I'd like for you to go meet some people. Maybe uh, reload on your donuts. Take a couple minutes to fellowship. Then we'll come right back in and move into the rest of our service. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. I'm glad you all are here. We had a couple of new musicians up here. Now, Joy, can you can you help me with these girls? This is Audrey and Elena Cox. All right. And, and their families with us in the back. Fantastic. Thank y'all. Man, thank y'all. Jaden Gray. Jaden, over here on the drums. Jaden Gray. His mom's back in the Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, let's go ahead and, and move into the next part of our service. This is this is one of my favorite parts. Um, this this is a time that we celebrate a lot of stuff. We celebrate when our teams win, and we celebrate when we eat, and all that stuff. We also celebrate when God adds to His church. And so we have a family. The children's family are going to come today, and they they uh, are going to become publicly members of our church, and they they've been coming, uh, attending here for for quite some time. And uh, I wanted y'all to meet them today. And Jacob is real happy. He's real scared. He's a little bit shy about this. It's okay. You just have So this is... Uh, now see, if you're going to cry, you're going to get me messed up. See? So this is Mark and Janet Childress. And this is Zach, who's a very talented musician. He's been playing for us. And Jacob is, is here also. Jacob is, is my buddy. And so um, this... Very talented family have been uh, coming for a while, and uh, I just wanted would you would you say something? Sure, I'd like you to. Um, first of all, uh, I'd just like to say how good it is to be here. Um, it's been quite a journey uh, for our family. Um, we've been searching for a church for about two years. Uh, we've been here and there, Harrisburg, Stanley County, uh, but never could settle on where God wanted us to be. I've been going to visit and visit and visit, and it just never got settled in my heart. And when you're wanting God to lead you to a place where your family can plug in and praise Him and serve Him, it's hard. Um, God led us here. Uh, like I said, the journey's long. And if you want to know, I'll sit down and, and tell you about it. Um, but we just know God led us here. Uh, we met Pastor David. Um, I, I was skeptical when we came. Uh, we drove in and I said, wow, a little, little barn. <laughs> uh, little barn, big God. Uh, we came in and, and, and just felt at home. So we got to meet with uh, Pastor David and Mary, and they came to the house, and we talked. And after him sharing the vision of the church and where the church wants to go and what the church is about, and, and being a grace church, we just love people from all walks of life, uh, right. and wanting everybody to come in and, and be a part of this church and the warmth that we felt here. Um, after praying and praying and praying, and talking to Janet and the boys, uh, the little one that, that won't look at you the first Sunday, he's like. Mom, Dad, I don't want to go anywhere else but the barn church. Zachary, you know, being right here in Mount Pleasant all his life in high school, playing in a band, he's like, Dad, this is somewhere where I want to invite my friends. Um, and being right here in the community, uh, Janet teaches at A.T. Allen. She gets to see a lot of her students. And uh, this is a good place. We love the fact that it's community-oriented, and we're just, just happy to be here. Pray and uh, 
those of you who have, you know, church is a, when things are close to your heart, they, they're emotional. And, and finding a church home, not just a church to go to and sit in and slide in on the back row and sit and watch. Finding a church home is hard. It, it can rip your heart out. You know, when you leave churches and people and friends and it's just hard, you know, because that's, that's your passion. The people that love church, they're serious about the church. And, and uh, some of you out there right now, that you're in that process. You're visiting around and you're looking. It's hard. And uh, these folks have been through down that journey. And, and God, God has so clearly, step by step, led him here to this place. And uh, when God does it, it's done right. And yes. so we're, we're thankful. And I, I really like the, the process of... Uh, of membership when folks can come up and publicly say, you know what, we're not just slipping in. We're not just hiding. We're, we're making this public and we're stepping across the line and we're here because this is home and we're here to serve Jesus in this place. And so we're going to pray. And I'd like for you to join me now in, in a, a prayer, kind of a prayer of dedication for these precious folks, this wonderful family who we've already uh, fallen in love with. And, and uh, God, God didn't send them here to sit. And watch. God sent them here to serve, just like all of us, as, as we pitch in and do what we can do for the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father, uh, I'm really amazed at, uh, at how you work in, in our all of our lives. Lord, the journey, the ups and downs and highs and lows, and relationships, and the wins and the losses. And God, just to thank you for being God. And through all that, all of the, the bumps and bruises and, and things that, that we meet in our journey of life. And, and God, I thank you for, for raising up a place in a barn in, in, on the backside of Mount Pleasant where folks can come and, and be accepted. It's not about what we drive or what we wear or how much we put in the offering. God, it's this place of grace, forgiveness, and mercy, and love. God, I thank you for leading this family here to, to, to serve you in this place. Thank you for their, their giftedness and their talents and their heart. Thank you for their journey. And God, I pray that this church would be a family, a haven, a safe place for them. And I know they'll be a blessing to this church. God, we, we celebrate and we thank You for bringing them here. God, this is, this is Your work. You're building this church. And Lord, we're just thankful. We want You to just keep on doing it. And God, as there are others that are sitting out here today, they're looking for a home. God, I pray that You just, just speak into their heart. And Lord, whether it's here or somewhere else, God, You just put us where You want us to be. You lead us to where You want us to be. And God, I give this family to You today. I pray that You would bless them and encourage them and love them and take care of them. And we thank You for sending them here to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we thank this family for coming today. Well now, y'all can sing with us. <laughs>
Good. Now I'm going to get it cleared out a little bit because I like to move around up here. Alright, so once you open your Bibles to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. <coughs> have uh, several things that we do to try to encourage you. We try to be a little bit of a resource for you. Um, in the back we have these little devotionals. These are called Our Daily Bread. If you don't have a good, consistent devotional life with Jesus, uh, it's, like, it's like eating. If you eat well, it, it nourishes you and it makes you strong and healthy. If you don't, you become weak and anemic. And so we, we want to help encourage you to be in the Word every day. You can come to church for an hour and a half, two hours on Sunday morning. You can even come to Bible study. You can do things, but you've got to be nourished. You've got to be in the Word. And so these are called Our Daily Bread. If you don't have one, please take some in the back. Now i got a new box. These are they're three months at a time. This is June, July, August. So the new one started June. The others we have back there... That are, that are through April, and this one starts in May. So, uh, or I'm sorry, this one starts in June. So if you want to pick these up, there are some other things in the back. Um, there are books, there are things that we can help you with if we'd like to, uh, we'd like to encourage you any way we can, okay? So our daily breads are there, and I think that'll help you. All right. Luke chapter 17. Um, uh, interesting topic today, and I've, I've just, I felt like this was really what the Lord had for us. Uh, after the Easter season. We had two weeks where we focused uh, our sermons on Easter. We talked about the, the dark and the light of Easter. We talked about the, the crucifixion, the, the time that Jesus walked on the earth and the time that, that came to Him where He was going to be drinking His cup, which was bitter, bitter and hard and difficult, and, and he was abused, and he was cursed, and spit upon, and beaten, and embarrassed, and humiliated, and ultimately crucified, and then put in a tomb. That was the first part of Easter, which wasn't fun. And then we talked about Easter Sunday, which was the good part. That's the part where the, the ladies came to the tomb, and, and they came to look for Jesus, and he wasn't there. There was an angel there. And, and the, the, there was an earthquake, and the stone was rolled away. Now, do you remember why the stone was rolled away? So we not, go in. They, not Jesus could Jesus. The stone didn't bother Jesus. He could have got out without the stone, but the, the stone was moved so we could go in and see that he's not there. It was for us. It was for the ladies, the witnesses. And so I, I was just thinking about man. Easter was incredible. Last Sunday. I don't, I don't even have words. Uh, we had... And you got, I, I don't want to talk too much about this. I was hoping... That, I was thankful that the fire marshal was at his church instead of our church last Sunday. Let's put it that way. We had a lot of people here last Sunday. A lot of people. More than I ever thought I would see it in this little place. Uh, and, and, you know, Mary and I and others who, who kind of were in on that start. We talked out here one night by the fire pit and we just I don't know, y'all, what do you think? I mean is this is this for real? I mean we really want to do this? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, but I think God wants us to. And then last Sunday we had two hundred and fifty five people in this place. It is not the preacher or the committee or the whatever that builds the church. The real church. It's God that builds the church. It's God that sends the pieces and makes it fit just right. And you are a part of that. And we've said from the beginning a lot of things that we, we God began to show us. I said from the beginning, you know what? This isn't gonna. This is not gonna be for everybody. There will be people come and visit, and there have been people come and visit, and they it, it wasn't for them. That's okay. Everybody don't want to go to a church in a barn. It's okay. It's okay. We didn't have concrete for a while. It was dirt and stuff. And and there was a big old... Uh, well, we'll talk about that next week. But uh, 
This is not going to be for everybody. Everybody that comes isn't going to stay. It's okay. It's not my. It's between you and God. And so God has done a lot of things. And so I just I, I've been thinking all week about kind of reflecting about how good God has been to us and how good God has been to us as as Christians because of Easter and because of the cross. And I thought, the Lord gave me a, a passage and I thought, you know what, this is good for us to think about. And so today, I want us to talk about an attitude. Your, your kids ever have an attitude? <laughs> How come that's such a negative connotation? <laughs> you can have a good attitude too. But yeah. somehow it comes across as, you got job. an attitude. Uh, I want to talk to you about an attitude. An attitude of gratitude today. I want us to look at Luke chapter 17. Now, I want to give you a little teaser about next week. Next week, every Sunday's different. And, and God, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I have about the next 10 weeks planned out as far as the sermon topics. Now, uh, and that's just, I'm just, that's just kind of me. I'm, I'm a little bit. I like organization. I like structure. I like planning. Bill, what are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? Dude. A little bit? <laughs> okay, maybe I'm anal. <laughs> yep. Some of you know what I'm talking about. So what I'm saying is, God, we, we, we plan. But sometimes God just says, okay, that's good, now let's do this. And, and so I'm excited about the next several weeks. And uh, next Sunday is going to be, it, it was about, Deidre, you, you had a lot to do with this. The, the day Deidre came forward and we, we anointed her and prayed over her. Remember that? Um, and the next week she got the news from her doctors that the, the, the cancer wasn't, there was not cancer. It wasn't cancer. And so God began to, to kind of drill into my thoughts about next Sunday. Next Sunday we're gonna we're gonna I'm not gonna preach like normal. Um, we'll preach good. No, um, I'm not gonna preach like normal next week. Next week I'm gonna read a passage and we're gonna have stories. And our focus next week is gonna be about healing. And and not only healing, we're gonna go even deeper than healing. We're gonna talk about deliverance. Sometimes God heals you. But then other times He delivers you. That's right. And He makes you free. Amen. And, and folks, if you've ever been in bondage, you will understand what it means to be free. And, and this is what knowing Jesus Christ is all about. We're going to talk about that next week. We're going to talk about stories of, of physical healing. We're going to talk about emotional healing. We're going to talk about spiritual deliverance and healing. And that, that's next week. So uh, we're going to have some neat stories next week about how God not only has healed, but how He has delivered through the power of God. Something not, that we can't do. In fact, you know, you can go to your doctor, your psychiatrist, you can go to all that, and they're, they're, they can be wonderful and very helpful, but nobody can heal like the great physician. Amen. And we're going to hear some stories. If you want to be encouraged... Come next week and bring your hanky. Because it's going to be some of that too. Alright? But that's next week. Today, attitude of gratitude. Luke chapter 17. We're going to read just verse 11 through 9 through 18. Oh, we'll go ahead and go through 19. And, and we'll talk about that. But first of all, let me, let me give you a little bit of a, of a story. Uh, a, a, an illustration, I guess. Have you ever heard of the animal called a jackal? You ever heard of that? It's kind of like a little coyote. And, and uh, there's, a, there's a unique story about the nature of a jackal. It's a dog-like animal, lives in Africa and Asia. This particular one is called the silverback jackal uh, from Africa. Now, I like animals. I love zoos and the animal kingdom. I grew up on a farm, so I'm interested in things like this. So, it, this is an interesting animal. Scientists have studied this animal, and there's a phenomenon about this animal. And, and they haven't found it in really any other uh, species in the animal kingdom. And when there is a, a litter, 
there's usually several cubs, usually four or five, maybe six cubs in the litter of jackals. Well, they grow up, you know, nurture, and they grow up and become independent. And the thing about jackals, uh, that they leave and they lead their own lives, except something unique happens in this litter of jackals. Often, in, in fact, in most cases, one young jackal returns to help the parents to raise more litters. Oh, wow, okay, that's interesting. So, so you have this litter of jackals, four, five, six, and, and they grow up and they all go off except one. And one comes back. And he comes back to help mama and help daddy around the house and, and the den and he helps them with other litters. And this is a very unique situation. And it's much more likely for the next litter to survive because of this phenomenon, as this, this perpetuates. Now, who designed that? God designed that. You know, this is, there's not a scientific theory for this is why the evolution, evolution process... No, God designed that. God gave them that nature for the perpetuation of this particular species. Very interesting. Well, now here's a question I ask myself. Why did that one cub come back to help? Well, you know, it's just nature. It's just, it's just the way they are. It's the way God... Well, maybe they were trained to do that. Maybe, 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 maybe one was just really thankful said, you know what, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm going to go help mom. Now, I'm, I'm just, I don't know that. I'm not scientifically throwing that out there. But it would really make a lot of sense if that one little guy said, wow, this was so good, I'm going to come back and help mom and dad because I'm just so... Ultimately, I'll tell you why. Because that's God's design. That's how God made this species. This is an illustration from the animal kingdom that is strikingly similar to an incident that Jesus encountered in this passage that we're going to see in Luke chapter 17. Now, in your bulletin, there's a little, uh, a little outline, which is not very good, but it just kind of helps us organize our thoughts here. As uh, chapter 17, we'll begin in verse 11, and, and uh, we'll follow a little bit of an outline here. Starting with verse 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, Jesus is moving in and out communities and towns, and he's kind of a, a doing a little itinerant ministry, and he's going places and, and meeting people, and he's passing through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. If you have a, a map in your Bible sometime, perhaps you could trace that journey. And He's going through these, these little places, and he's meeting people. Verse 12, as he entered into a certain village... There met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. So, point number one, kind of verses 11 through 13, we, we see a cry for help. And so here we see these lepers, uh, which stood afar off. Now, there was a reason they're standing afar off, because they're lepers. Okay, they got a disease and they can't be with everybody else because they're contagious. And they're outcasts, and it's a really bad situation. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Verse 13. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus! And then there's another word behind Jesus. Master, have mercy on us. So number one, there's a cry for help. These, these people were together and they were diseased. They were outcasts. They were broken. By the way, guess what that represents? You me. Do you know that we're all broken? Do you know that? We are all... Now, you may have your nice clothes on, and you may have your nice whatever, but you're broken. We're broken. We're lepers. We're kind of outcasts. And so these they, they heard that the Master, this, this famous person was coming by, and they got together and said, There he is. There's so, so evidently there was some notoriety. And they yelled, Jesus, Master! Help us. Notice they didn't go into a big, long, deep theological dissertation on approaching the Master. They just yelled for help. You know what? When you're desperate enough, Jesus, help me. Alright, so, so number one, we see the, the cry for help. Number two, 
we see a call for healing in verse 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, these are the words of Christ, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were what? They were cleansed. Now for a leper, which is an, un, an excruciatingly <clears throat> terrible, devastating skin disease. And when Jesus said, okay, I hear you guys. I want you to go see the priest and we'll, we'll tell you why in a little bit. And on their way there, they were cleansed. Jesus gave them a call for healing in verse 14. Now, the, number three, a cause for a thankful heart, which is in verses 15 and 16. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, did what, class? Came back. And he realized. Well, what are what you and I would have done if we, the first time we realized I've never, for the first time, I'm clean. I'm healed. He stopped. Verse 15. When he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a quiet little timid voice, right? No. No? With a loud voice, he did what? He glorified God. This wasn't a Thank you. Praise the Lord. He yelled with a loud voice. Y'all, he had leprosy. He was clean. He'd never been clean before. You know, the, the dirtier you are, <clears throat> the more you're going to appreciate really, really, really being clean. Amen. And he wasn't timid about it. Verse 16. Not only did he yell with a loud voice, he glorified God. And verse 16 said, He fell on his face at his feet, at the feet of Jesus, giving him what? Thanks. Folks, you want a picture of true worship? That's it. That's the real deal. That is authentic unrestricted, unhindered, pure worship. He stopped. He yelled. He didn't care about, oh, shh, man, be quiet. Keep it down, man. You're embarrassing. Who cares? He didn't care about being embarrassed. He didn't care about being anything because he was clean and he'd never been clean before. That's what it means to come to Christ. That's what it means to be free when you've been in bondage. And, and he didn't care if somebody next to him said, Man, be quiet, you're embarrassing me. Calm down, dude. You're at school and you're embarrassing me around my friends. He didn't care. Because he was clean. He fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. There's a reason that little phrase is tagged on the end of that verse. That's there for a purpose. Don't miss that. The fact that he was a Samaritan. All right, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then the next, the last part is there's a concern for an unthankful heart in verses 17 through 19. And Jesus, Jesus is experiencing, Jesus is observing this, this response. And so here's Jesus, and Jesus speaks to this. Jesus answers said, hmm. Didn't I heal ten? Well, wasn't there ten of these guys? But where are the nine? Verse 18. There are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. Now that's the Samaritan part. This guy's a stranger. Let me show you. Verse 19, and, and he said unto him, Arise. Jesus said, Get up. Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Now, let me, let me make some 
observations as we look back and maybe highlight some thoughts and then we'll, we'll wrap things up today. Uh, Jesus' last journey to Jerusalem, He passed through these, these ter areas of, of Samaria and of Galilee. In one village, He met with a group of ten lepers on His journey. And they, they somehow knew He was coming and they, they said, guys, if, if we can get this guy, this guy has healed people. He's kind of special. He's unique. And if we can just get his attention, he might heal us. Our, this thing, he might fix this mess that we're in. And, and so, now, there are lots of messes to be in. This mess was leprosy. These ten had this common thing and it was called leprosy. Leprosy is a general term designated for various forms of skin disease. In this instance, it is an incurable disease that numbs and destroys the skin. Your skin rots and it falls off. Now, I know some of y'all watch these zombie shows. <laughs> I know some of y'all watch The Walking Dead. <laughs> or whatever they are. These guys, skin is rotting off of them and it's, fall it's, it's, it's nasty. It's so bad that they, 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 they won't let them stay in the town because it's just it's contagious and it's nasty and it stinks and it's rotten and it's awful. And these are human beings that have contracted this incurable disease that numbs and destroys their skin and it produces fever, and it's eventually a crippling effect, and it ultimately just it destroys you. It kills your body, your skin, and you, you rot, and you die. I can't even imagine the pain this, that this must be. Leprosy. These lepers were an outcast because of their condition, and they were commanded to remain where they would not contact us. Now guys, y'all... You can't come into town. You can't get in the road. You've got to stay out here away from people. So what? You can't. You're, you're nasty and stinking and you're, you're disgusting. And you cannot be around other people. And, and so we, we see over in Leviticus chapter 13, we, we see some a, a little bit of an explanation of, about this terrible disease. And, and so as a group, they, they knew Jesus was coming and they had heard of the fame of Jesus and it, and it spread throughout the land as the healer. And so they cried out to Jesus for mercy. Now usually, people like this, this wasn't uncommon. Perhaps they were beggars or perhaps they had other infirmities and they, they, they would cry out for, and they would cry sometimes for alms and help and money. Have you ever got drive, drove, driven up to an exit and there's somebody there asking for help? Well, this was like that, only they had leprosy and they were dying. It was disgusting. So all of those thoughts, as you see them, that we think multiply that. And, and this is who these guys were. Here's the thing about Jesus. Jesus was filled with compassion. And Jesus did not ignore them. He was busy. He had a schedule. He had an agenda. But He heard them and He saw them. And He, and he, he not only saw them, He heard them and then He responded to them because He had compassion on them. Because that's who Jesus was. And He responded. And He had compassion. He didn't ignore them. And He said this, Go to the priest, which was important. Again, in Leviticus chapter 14, there is a precedent. There's a precedent for this type of healing. So, Jesus is always consistent in the Scriptures. He, he, the Bible is the best commentary on the Bible. And so Jesus said, okay, so you all got leprosy. Okay, there's a plan. We're going to follow this plan. Go to the priest. Fulfill the Old Testament law for cleansing. Now, Jesus was giving him a test. It wasn't a new test. In fact, there's a song that we sing sometimes. An old song. And it's called Trust and Obey. And that song is a very, very deep, rich principle. And he was giving these guys a test. If, now, they could have said, well now, I don't want to go see the priest Jesus. I want you to heal me now. That's not what 
Jesus said do. Jesus said obey. We already have the law. So for those of you that think the law is not important, the Old Testament is not important, it is. It's in the Bible. It's important to us. The law is important. The law don't save us. But he said, remember the law. Go to the priest. If they obeyed, guess what Jesus was going to do? Sometimes we miss a blessing because we just don't obey. You know what? I want God to heal me, but I don't want to go to the priest. Dude, I want, I want money, but I want to get it in the mail, in cash, in an envelope. I don't want to go work for it. I don't want to have to put my time in. I don't want to have to fill out applications. I want it now. There's a plan in place. And Jesus usually says, why would we reinvent the wheel if we just follow what I've already told you? Because I'm God. Obey! Some really good points there. Now, let me, let me point out another important thing. He did not say go to the priest so the priest can heal you. The priest didn't heal. It's important. Jesus healed him. He said, go to the priest. You know what the priest's job was in this process? The priest pronounced them healed. Officially. Formally. The priest didn't heal. Your pastor, your pope, your father, your whoever, they can't heal you. We can anoint you and lay hands on you and pray for you, but healing comes from God. The priest don't heal. The priest pronounces you, look what God has healed you. You were healed in the process of obedience. Obey. But you know, we don't want to do that sometimes. We want the short, quick, fast food remedy. The quick one, the easy one. We don't want all the details. We don't want to go to the Bible studies. We don't want to do it the hard way. We want the quick, instant way. And a lot of times Jesus said, no, you need the journey. You need the journey. You need the detours. You need the roadblocks. You need the bumps in the road. Well, that's not fun. No. Sometimes it ain't. But He don't heal us because it's fun. Jesus was giving them a test. It's all about trust and obey. Number one, if they would obey, then number two, they would be healed. If they didn't obey, they would not be healed. So, it's, it's important that you notice, as they went, verse 14, go show yourself to the priest, and it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. They didn't get, okay, we're now here, we're at the priest. No, they were healed as they went to the priest. So the priest didn't heal. God, the Holy Spirit, healed. And the priest saw that they were healed and that they obeyed and He pronounced them healed. As they went. Now, let's get kind of to the, to the meat here. Nine of the ten were Jews. One was a Samaritan. Why is that important? There's, there's some prejudice here. There's a human interest story here, folks. Ethnicity is a part of the life that we live in and the way that we deal with society today. There were nine Jews. And they were, it was custom, and they, they were kind of like normal, and it was, but then there was this Samaritan. You know what the Samaritans were like? Well, they were, they were literally, in the Greek, there's a term, he was considered a foreigner. Now, that is a little bit convicting to me. Let me try to reveal a little authenticity here. 
I'm from East Tennessee. In the mountains. Way up in the mountains. There ain't but one way in and out of there. And the folks that live there have been there a long time. And when folks came through there that weren't from there, they were considered foreigners. And there's really, you don't really belong here. Because you're not from here, are you? You ever heard that term? You ain't from around here, are you? Mm -hmm. Well, the reason they would ask that is because... Where y'all from? Connecticut. Connecticut. We, we do have a quota of Yankees in our membership. We know we call them. Y'all are in. Y'all are grandfather in. Thank you. Where, where are you? Brooklyn. Man, it's getting worse over here. Yeah. So, I didn't have that plan, but that works. <laughs> Samaritans, you know, Jews, Y'all are cool, because you're Jews. We're, we're here, it's us. It's, it's kind of our... It's, it's prejudice! Now, where I'm from, there didn't many people stand up and say, y'all are prejudiced. The preacher didn't even say that. He, he was. It was... You, if, you're, if you're coming through there... You didn't stay because you weren't welcome. Because you're a foreigner. This guy was a foreigner. The one guy, the one guy that didn't fit, the one guy that didn't live there naturally, the one guy that they all looked down on and acted like you're you're not only a leper, you're a foreigner. You don't belong here. That's the one that really got it. He really got a hold of him. He really appreciated what God did for him in healing him. He was a Samaritan and he was... And it's interesting that it's important enough to put that in here. He was from Samaria. Now folks, it's, it's difficult. And, and we all would admit, oh, I'm not prejudiced. Because we really don't want to be. But when there's somebody on your street... And there's somebody in your school or in your class that ain't like you. They're different. Oh, I'm not precious. I just don't talk to that person. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus wasn't precious. He didn't care. He didn't care what color your skin was, how much money you had, what kind of cherry you drove, what kind of sandals you wore, or where you got He didn't see your skin color or where, what, how straight your hair is or what, anything like that. All he saw was a leper. These people were dying and they needed to be healed. I think, I think, I think personally that we're all prejudiced. I just really do. We don't want to be. We deny it. But when somebody's not like us, we may not even realize it. Not Jesus. If we could see with the eyes of Jesus. By the way, guess what leper, leper, leper does? It makes them all the same. Guess what sin does? We're all in the same boat, y'all. We're hopeless. We're broken. I don't care where you're from. I don't care if you're from Dutch Road or Salisbury or Albemarle or Charlotte. It don't matter. Our sins are all the same. And that's what makes us one in Jesus Christ. Because we're all broken. And we bring that brokenness. They didn't come to Jesus and say, Jesus... I'm from Samaria. Heal me. Jesus, I'm from... No, he said, I'm a leper. I'm blind. I've got no hope. I'm lost. I'm dying. 
The person of Samaria was held in very low regard by the Jews. The Jews looked down on dogs, foreigners. They were prejudiced. This disease wasn't prejudiced. And the disease of sin is no respect of persons. That's right. And don't be looking down your nose at somebody. Because what they did may be a little worse than what you do because you probably cover up far worse sins than what they do. By the way, who are we to judge somebody else? You see how ridiculous that is in God's eyes? So you have this one sinner, and he's going to look down over here and criticize this other sinner. Oh, that makes sense. You're sinners! Who are you? Who am I to look down on somebody else? And if you think somebody else has a higher standard of morality because of where they're from or what their job is, you're wrong biblically. We're sinners. The, the thing that's amazing here was not only was he the only one who returned, but look, look what he did. And he turned back, turned around, and he went back and he yelled with a loud voice and he glorified God and he fell on his face. This guy made a spectacle of himself. You think people notice he's down on the, on the ground trying to hold Jesus' feet? You think people noticed? He didn't care. All he knew was he was dying of leprosy and God cleaned him up. You don't care when you get the real deal. You don't care. This Samaritan was only, the only one who returned. Now, there's, there's some that think here I, I don't know. It, it may be a stretch. There are some I've read that think that the nine or the ten were healed. Only one came back and worshipped Jesus. There are those that think this is the only one that really got saved. Because his faith, Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. I, I'm not going to disagree with that. Everybody that God touches don't get saved. Woohoo! I got a raise. I'm saved. <laughs> Not necessarily. God blesses thoughts. But this guy came back. And there was a difference. Where are the other nine? Jesus asked that question. Your faith has made you well. Nine were cleansed. Only one came back. Jesus said, get up, arise. Your faith has made you... You're not only physically healed, you're whole. Your faith. Here's what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about gratitude as I close today. Gratitude, this, this one out of ten had gratitude. He said, you know what? I have been saved. I'm going to go thank this guy. The other nine didn't. They didn't go back. Now, I'm not saying they weren't thankful, but they didn't go back. This one did. <clears throat> gratitude is a distinctive quality. It sets you apart. Make a note. Make a mental note this week. How few people say thank you. Make a memory of how few people. Some of you, your vocations put you in a little bit more of a, a relational situation. You'll notice it more. It sets you apart. You stand out in a crowd. Not many are truly thankful to others or God. It's easy to take things for granted when things always go well for you. Now, now think with me. I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. You, you take a little spoiled little brat. <laughs> I was trying to be... <laughs> Sometimes they're, they're less grateful. 
because they're spoiled. Things always go right for them. They don't appreciate things sometimes. Because things are always perfect. Those who have faced the hardest times are often most grateful. Uh, boy, this is a silly illustration, but my wife fixes breakfast for me, and that's not silly, that's really good. And this morning, we, we went, uh, got some groceries yesterday, and we got, we get sausage or bacon, and we got sausage, we got bacon. And uh, this, this bacon was, I don't know, it was some kind of different center cut or something, I don't know what it was. But man, I tasted that today, and I thought, man, that was really good. I mean, that was better than normal. That was really good bacon, and I noticed that, and and it it was it made a it was different. You know, if you've been really hungry. probably will appreciate good food more. Yeah. If you've been really hungry. There are folks sitting in this room that have been homeless. You hadn't had me. You hadn't had food. They're probably, they probably have a little bit of a propensity to appreciate their food more. When you're really hungry, you appreciate it more. If, you, if you've been really really sick I mean really sick you probably will appreciate health more than most you know what it's like to face death face to face to get up in the morning and be alive and be able to get a breath and have food and have a home you probably have a little bit of a propensity to appreciate a little bit more. If, if you've ever, listen, watch. If you've ever been really bad, I mean really bad, you probably will embrace grace a little bit more. Like this Samaritan. Jesus is our salvation. Let me ask you a question. How often do you say thank you? Let me give you a test. I know some of you get test anxiety. And I know you're starting to get nervous. Look relaxed. I'm not going to give you a grade, but I want to give you a test. I want you to listen very closely. This is a gratitude test. Number one. How many times in the last two weeks have your parents or your spouse or someone close to you had to encourage you to stop complaining? Oh, man. Well, over one. I mean, really? Somebody, did you, somebody told you that recently? Will you stop complaining? That's not a good sign on your gratitude test. Number two, when you talk with others, this is painful. Do you talk more about the things you wish you had or the things you already had? Do you talk more about the things you wish you had or the things you already have? That's going to tell you a lot about if you're a person of gratitude. If you really appreciate what you have. Number three. Uh, over two. When you talk about others in your life, leaders, your boss, teachers at school, your people you work with, Etc., etc. When you talk about others in your life, do you talk about things you like about them or things you don't like? That's almost over three. When you talk about 
about your fill in the blank? You talk bad about them or do you talk good about them? That has a lot of reflection into what your heart is really filled with. A heart of gratitude or a heart of ignorance? Number four. This is the last one. Relax. <laughs> if you had a choice, would you choose a different life? A different family? A different job? Or are you content with the one you have? Now, I didn't say they're perfect. <clears throat> Because they're not, but they're yours. They're yours. That will tell you if you're a person like the Samaritan, a person who's grateful, or not. Now let me pull it all together. Ooh, through that, that was painful. The natural flesh that we live in every day, that we're living in right now, the inclination is not to be thankful. The natural fleshly inclination is to gripe and complain and argue and criticize. That is as flesh as you can get. That is as base human body flesh as you can get. That's as, that's as close to the devil as you can get. By the way, you know why the devil became the devil? Because he wasn't satisfied with his current situation. He thought, well, this isn't fair. I ought to be as good as you, Jesus. I ought to be as good as you, God. I ought to be a I, I'm not content with this situation. And he fell. Our flesh does not naturally become grateful to God or others. If you're neutral, you probably don't show gratitude. Well, I'm not so bad. I don't complain. But do you say thank you? It's one thing not to complain. It's another thing to do like the Samaritan did. One out of ten. Let's see. One out of ten. One out of ten. If one out of ten folks are really thankful, are you one of the ones? It's one thing not to complain. It's another thing to really express your gratitude to God and others. Be different. Be godly. Be like Jesus. Be thankful. Showing appreciation for kindness is what Jesus wants us to do. It is the will of God. Do you know how many times we can read you verses about prayer, and He says, give thanks. Give thanks. All things with thanksgiving. Do you know how much it is the will of God for us to be thankful? Oh God, I, I'm in a hurry, and I need this, and I need that. Could you please take care of that? Amen. How about thank you? It's what Jesus wants us to be. Insensitivity to kind deeds done or kind thoughts expressed in our behalf is an attitude foreign to most of us. Gratitude is an attitude possessed by a few and expressed by even fewer. The one who expresses gratitude is truly distinctive. And they're really like Christ. 
Church, it's so natural to complain. It's so natural to criticize. Well, yeah, but they shouldn't act like that. No, they shouldn't. Well, yeah, they, they shouldn't say that. Well, they made it. They messed up. Yeah, they did. And they did, and they will do it again. It's natural for us to judge them and criticize them. It's unnatural for us to be thankful for them anyway. Parents, your children, people you work with, church, I want us to be a church that is thankful, not ungrateful, not not a church full of spoiled brats. Let's pray. <coughs> I'm going to pray. This has been different today. Um, and sometimes we miss little lessons that Jesus wants to teach us. Practical lessons. You know, maybe you need to tell your husband or your wife that you appreciate them. Honey, I know you're not perfect. But boy, I know I'm not. And I appreciate that bacon for breakfast this morning. I appreciate the things you do for me. Because you're being Jesus. Maybe somebody in this church need to say, I appreciate you. Thank you. This has a lot to do with where our heart really is. Because it's an attitude. And I'm going to pray. And, and I want to do this. It's, it's none of my business. If, if This is for God. Okay, This is you and God. If, if God is maybe just pricked a little bit today through this lesson. You say, God, I hear you. I get it. God, I, help me. I know I need to be more of a grateful person. I need to be grateful to you, God, and others in my life. I need to be like Jesus. I need to be distinctive. I need to be different. Anybody like that? Would, would you just like to raise your hand just between you and God? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lots and lots and lots. Again, that's none of my business. That's between you and God. It's important that you come to church and God speaks to you through His Word. That we get something from God today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, God, I know this is for me. I know this is for me. Thank you. <coughs> Lord, there, there are these lessons that are hard so natural for us to be judgmental and critical and hurtful. God, this is my church family. God, I pray that you bless this body, this church. Lord, we're lepers. We're broken. We're dying. We stink. We fail. We're annoying. I know that. But God, this is your church. God, I confess right now the sin of ingratitude in, in my life. May we not play games and cover it up and act like it's okay. It's sin. God, it's, I confess that sin. And, and Lord, I want to be more like Jesus. I want to appreciate what I have. My house, my car, my job. God, get us healthy. Get us healthy as a church family. Get us clean. We need you. Thank you for caring enough to teach us a lesson today. And, and God, I pray there will be a difference in us this week. This afternoon, may thank you find its way back into our vocabulary. And, and 
more than anything else, may we say that to you right now. Thank you for healing us and giving us a place to live. And Father, we love you. I pray that this would make a difference in our life this week. In Jesus' name we pray. With thanksgiving. Amen. <coughs> Okay, thank you, church. Man, next Sunday is going to be pretty special. Don't miss that. Uh, if you if you give, if you tithe, if you give an offering to the Lord through the church, uh, uh, somebody, hey Hunter, show them where the box is back there, where we put our money. It's right there on the way out. If you want to thank you, Lord, that's where you do it. Okay, we don't pass the plate. Uh, again, if you're our guest, thank you for being here. We love you. Come back and see us. God bless you. You have a great, thankful week. You're dismissed.